Hello everyone, this is CPU Kabuto, and welcome back to more Shovel Knight. Last time, we, uh, we defeated, we defeated King Knight at Primark Keep. Sorry if I'm stuttering, it's been a bit of it, it's been a bit since I've <laughs> recorded, that's a bit of an understatement. I, it has been a while since my last video, and you may notice something, um, my, audio quality has drastically increased and that I'm gonna save that for the rest I'm gonna save that for um I'm gonna save the reason why for at the end of the video but stick around if you want to know um how exactly I messed that up anyway in in the last video I asked you guys to vote on whether or not you wanted to do our next foe Spectre Knight to be male or female and no one actually voted in that poll, so I'm just gonna go with the default and make him male. Um, I don't think there's anything that we need to do other than refill on i -Core. Can't exactly... Yep, I need to do that. I, I love this i -Core mechanic, simply because it is so amazingly... It's uh, is so amazingly useful. You just have to buy a cha raffle chalice, and then you can instantly refill all of your hearts and magic for free. It, that's I'd say it's overpowered, but I, honestly, I I love it. I, I I think it's a nice system. Anyway, because it benefits me. All right, so let's head off to. Without any further ado, let's just head to the lich yard. First thing you'll notice is that it's very dark and spooky with skulls! Don't worry, it's not as scary as it looks. I just noticed that that tree actually does look like a face. I like that. So, there are these bushes that we can hit and then bounce off of. And then you think, hey, maybe this is a bush. Nope, it's actually, wait for it, it's an electric frog. I don't know why there are electric frogs in this level. Maybe the develop devs just wanted a, an electric frog somewhere in the game and they couldn't find it anywhere else find another place to put it and they're like hey let's just stick it in the lich yard I don't know that's my own theory we have this dirt mound that we can dig up effectively digging up someone's grave not exactly a foreign concept in any game since I know a few games where you can actually disrupt people's graves in order to um, uh, get stuff from them but yeah, I think it's kind of funny. And the dirt mounts changed to have like body parts in it. It's just it's a bit spooky. Another thing is, oh, they're really gonna give me meat? Nope, they're gonna give you bombs. In fact, none of these platters are meat. They're actually bombs. This actually introduces us to things that aren't exactly what they seem. Ooh, spooky! I'm gonna be using the word spooky a lot. So, I uh, can just open this treasure chest. It doesn't contain anything useful. Uh, I mean, it does gold, but not anything that we can't get anywhere else. So, I'm going to move on, get that checkpoint. We know I said the skeleton has actually humorously lost his head. But we can actually bounce off his body in order to reach this place, which, if we hit this, we get gold. I'm not sure exactly if there was a... Is she actually that there? I'm gonna say not, but... Oh, also, there are these ghosts. They... You can't kill them, but you can temporarily stun them by hitting them with your trouble blade. If we go over here, we do get more gold, but we also get a skeleton fight, which actually drops more gold, so... Basically, we get more gold, but we have to fight for it. Also, we have more ghosts, and we actually learned that bouncing off of these tombstones causes, sometimes causes ghosts to appear. Not always, though. Just sometimes. It's kind of like the tombstones in Zelda, where you have, where if you touch them, the ghost comes out. All right. So we have a weak skeleton, and we're like, okay, this is pretty easy. Just, you just be up a skeleton. But then we realize there's a big skeleton, a big skeleton. I'm not exactly sure what they're called. I'm gonna call them big bones, simply because it, because it's a minor alliteration, and I like that. But I'm gonna put their cannon name on screen if I can find it, and if I'm actually right, I will also put that on screen. 
So, we just continue on, bounce off a couple of more electric frogs. Even if they're electrified, you can just pogo off them. So it's not a huge... I guess our um, shovel blade isn't made of something that easily conducts electricity, which is kind of weird because metals usually conduct electricity. Eh, I guess, I guess I'll put some research in that. If there's um, a non-conductive metal that's also blue, maybe cobalt, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's press on. And we get introduced to our second level gimmick. Not floating bushes, but ah, uh, darkness. This is one thing that I not that I don't really care for in this game. I'm sorry. I, I get the aesthetic appeal of it, and I actually kind of like the gameplay of it. it. It just gets a bit annoying at times, especially when they expect you to do precision platforming with it. I mean, it's workable, and I, and I can enjoy it, but it, it just gets a bit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's draining, but mm, I would say that it's a bit strenuous and repetitive. So we have all these headless skeletons, and we're like, Oh, how are we going to defeat all these guys? Fun fact, you can actually open that bomb and boom, blow them up, all up. It's actually timed very nicely, and I kind of like how they do that. Also, I like to say this as a, um, not to Castlevania, because you could find, like, wall chicken in that game. So, we, I think I, Eagle Raptor made a joke about that in, uh, Castlevania sequelitis. Uh, I, I'll put the clip here if I can find it. Mysterious hidden roasted dungeon wall chicken in Castlevania 1 healed you. Chicken in the walls. The wall chicken. I think the actual instruction manual said it was a pork chop, but he grew said it was wall chicken, so I, I'm gonna... I'm gonna say it's wall chicken. Plus, it fits in line with this, so... It, it just made the reference work. So... The obvious way forward may be... Oh! Let's keep going this way! Let's... Go up! But no, we're not going to do that. Instead, we are going to do that fancy maneuver where we hit that mush in midair to rise it even further, and then bounce off them to get to this higher ledge. And then we're expected to do, eh, not precision platforming, but platforming while pretty much blind, save occasional flashes of light. Okay, I'm not going to take too many risks here, just gonna, just go do that, okay. And we are good to go. Oh, here's a funny thing I found while playing things up, playing this level. Basically, when both of you are, both you and the Skeleton King are on here, you actually are causing the skeleton to sag and cause it to fall. And and I like how you can just crush the skeleton under that in order to not have to fight him, which is actually good for me, because I'm actually not too great at fighting those guys. Or any skeleton, really. And I am going to get out of your radius, because I have, but you, because you have caused me too many deaths. Bounce off his head twice in order to dethrone him. I, I th Also, I like it how his head is indestructible, but his body fades away. I think... I actually like to think that I was putting too much um, strain on his body by jumping on his head and I crushed his like knee joints and since he's a skeleton he just fell apart. Which is actually kind of gruesome when you think about it and Mario's just jumping on Goombas and they just get squashed. Also we have to do moving platforming. I could use a... I could use a later item to do this when I revisit it, maybe? But, like a peasant, I just have a shovel, so I can make do. Also, I think that if I can lure this frog over here... Nah, I think the devs predicted that. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, oh, uh, okay, maybe that's why they added them. So if we go over here, we can see that there is a horned... There's a crowned skeleton here. I always thought of them as, like, ancient kings. I, I guess you could see them as, like, warriors with giant extravagant headdresses. Get off of there! Get off of there! You're gonna, you're gonna kill me! Stop! Stop! Uh, whatever. We can get a dirt clot here. There's no real point in doing that. So, we get the dirt clot and we shovel that. Oh my goodness! Mm. I'm just getting down here. Collect some of the gold. Head off to the side and... Oh, look! Do me! No! Bomb! 
So we head back here and oh look, it's a Chester chest. What you got for me, buddy? And this is probably the by far the most <laughs> important item you will ever get. The phase locket. It makes you temporarily invincible. It's if since it's just one thousand dollars, it's a steal. I'm getting that. So I'm gonna demonstrate here. Or this game wants me to demonstrate here. So I'm just gonna walk through all those enemies and then dispatch them to get their gold. Maybe if I if I don't die, you know what? Maybe I, I I'm I'm just an open out of here. It does use one of the highest amounts of magic in the game, I think. It uses a lot of magic, so you can't like spam it a whole bunch unless you have a bunch. Also, I'm about to die. Oh, I'm going to get the heck out of Dodge and actually get the chicken. Because yes, that one is actually chicken. It would be mean if they just replaced it with bomb with a bomb and you'd be like, ah, screw you! Oh, I I missed by chance there. Actually, not entirely. Uh, <clears throat> okay, maybe entirely. Or maybe, eh. I'm gonna bounce off you. Uh, you don't supply enough. But... Spoke too soon. Wow. So bounce off that tombstone. Get the head over here. And what is our reward? A music page. So it's not too bad. <laughs> Just stroll along. We bounce off this guy's head. Dig up this gravestone. We actually... Oh, look, there's a pocket here. But we don't know. Is if we, if we can actually jump off that tombstone up above the HUD and drop down here to get some gold. Like 80. So it's not really worth it, but I think it's a cool little secret. And they're gonna sink this. <laughs> Wait, I didn't get a checkpoint somewhere. Where did I get a checkpoint? Eh. Well, it spit me up right. Mm! Stupid skeleton with knockback. Eh. Oh well. It's not like I have a whole bunch of gold. Not losing to you again. Ah! Right. You know what? I'm, I'm using my flare wand. There. Using relics to make your journey easier. Wow. I never thought of using a relic for that. So we can bounce off this bush. Oh, it's raised. And go down here. And get dropped with a pit into a mosh pit with a bunch of. Not a bunch of. But with one. Singular big bones. If you just wait for him to go down there, there he drops a turkey, so it's very, it's not very hard. He's not, he's not very hard to beat. That's what I'm trying to say. My goodness, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm terrible with speech. I, I stutter a lot. I, I just recognize that now. I realize that now. Also, problem with vocabulary. Man, that was actually a pretty smooth maneuver. Uh, not to brag, not to brag at all. And we are down to one space um, platforms. Oh, you actually see the bones flying out. I never actually noticed it before. See, I, I like that. I, I like the 8 bit aesthetic, but I also like that it's so deep. Like, it's got like, like, like little details like that. It, it just makes the game for me. Oh, 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 oh I'm so close to falling off there. <laughs> okay. Alright, wait for that to go down. Up, uh, yep, up, uh, up. Uh, you think you can fool me, game? You think you can fool me into wasting my life? Up. Uh. Shpookamagookums. Get our chicken from the wall, of course. And actually, this does remind me a lot of Castlevania's opening, where you have to go through that creepy archway with torches. That was intentional. Anyway, we're at the big bad himself. 
So this, this is no place for the living mortal. You shall be summoned when it is your time. And everyone has a time, as we have seen with your beloved shield knight. Lies! I won't believe such talk from phantoms. Your very existence is a vile deception. <laughs> the enchantress fool is just full of surprises. She's granted me new life. So then I might take yours! And so begins our fight with Spectre Knight. I unintentionally rhymed. So. So, we're gonna... So he's gonna start off with throwing his scythe and teleporting to catch it, which I think is a cool move in and of itself. But that's but one thing to note: the size hit box is huge. I mean, seriously, it takes up like um like an eighth of the screen at a time. You can also do that, which has insane reach, and you can also do that. So I so basically, when he's waiting for a scythe to return, or when he's like moving in between. Also, you can jump off his henchmen that he summons in order to hurt him. No, not hurt, like not jumping off of his henchmen. Killing his henchmen doesn't hurt him. It 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 just allows you to reach him easier. That's what I meant to say. And <clears throat> I didn't know that you can actually do that when he's actually transforming, actually warping. So I'm just gonna continue to hop on you. For a lot, and he can turn it dark. Joy. <laughs> you can, you can, you can oftentimes mostly make out where he is, thanks to how the stage is designed. So thank you, devs. Thank you for not being totally heartless. That is, that does, it does get a bit cheap though. Oh, I, I, I meant to be selecting my items. Not that, 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 and I now I mean to drink it. Good, good, good. The flying wand I find is also very useful here, except when he's actually throwing his scythe. But for that, I mean, it's it's relatively good when he's just standing still. I hate the dark. In both real life and this video game. Oh my god, I don't have enough magic to cast anymore. I could drink my other Icor, which really wouldn't have any negative consequences, but I'm gonna wait, but I'm gonna hold off on that until I absolutely need it because of both my magic and life. But, oh, come on. One, one more. There we go. And I get the heroic stab. Actually, I'm not sure if this was the original game, but that death animation for Spectre Knight actually comes from his um, DLC pack that you get to play as him in. And now we get another campfire scene. But this one, it's just a bit different. As we have to, as we see Shield Knight falling, and we have to catch her, save her. Oh wait, we already had one of these dreams. <laughs> but this one has enemies now, so you can get at, so you can get um, money from it. And now we get to jump and save her. I love how it goes into slow motion, so you actually have time to react. I mean, it's just fair. We dig up our campfire like any responsible person. Remember, only you can prevent wildfires. And now we get, and now we can shoot our flare wand. And in that chest, we get a meal ticket, which is actually very nice for me because now we get to get another health upgrade. I think we, I think if all, if it's at all possible, I'd like to expand my health every, um, every part. But now the world map has opened up to us. But I'm gonna head back to the village. Just, to, I think this is how we're gonna end up there every time. At the end of each episode, we're going to turn in our music sheets. And actually play the music that we had gotten. Um. Ah, wait. Uh, 
All right. <laughs> oh my goodness, he actually makes comments about it. If you press start, dead crowd tonight, I says I. Listen, learn, never crack jokes in the graveyard. Never ever. <laughs> if you press start button, then you if, the, if you press start button, then he makes comments about it. I never knew that. That's awesome. Sorry for spending too much time on that. And now we can turn our meal ticket. A meal ticket handed to me. I'll get to work on my best recipe. I'll dazzle your palate in no time or less. So bon appetit and pardon the mess. And we get to expand our maximum life. I think I'm gonna upgrade my magic. Yeah, it's only 1,500. And kaboom! <laughs> oh, we can see he eats pages from his notebook. That's awesome. All right. So I'm not sure if there's anything else for us. Hmm. You know what? A few things have opened up to us. There's this bonus stage. It's actually an auto-scroller, and we can get some gold from it. Hence the ruby on the title screen. Not the title screen, the MAP screen! Not title screen. I think it just pretty much speaks for himself, itself, plus I kind of need to concentrate, so I am not going to commentate during this section. Probably should have taken the lower path. Or not. Maybe. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back the best I can. Yep, got it. And we actually get to see the um, bushes return. Basically, I like to see these as like our final test. So the stage stops there, so we can get those dirt mounds and not dirt mounds, um, dirt blocks, and then we get reimbursed at the end. So. I think that actually more than made up for, or at least somewhat made up for our um, upgrade. So I'm gonna stop by the trap upon to refill on Nightcore, and I think that is gonna be it for this episode. All right. This has opened up to us the forest of phasing. And all these other things have opened up to us. So I'm going to. D so I'm going to actually. Yeah. And we've also opened up this thing. I'm not gonna spoil what it is or what this is, but I think you might know what this is from just from the title. I'm going to be going over all these extra bonus stages in, like, a bonus episode. Basically where I go over all the stuff that I missed or just skipped over time. But next time, I think we are going to be doing... You know what? I'm going to do the Explodatorium first simply because, well, I don't think it's... I don't think it's really that... Mmm, wait... Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do Plague Knights first, so I can access this little thing. I guess it's not really gonna matter since I'm not going to actually be doing that in this episode, in any episode, which is big. I think I'm gonna do that in a separate bonus episode. Wait. Yeah, I'm gonna do the extra bonus stages in, like, separate bonus episodes. Probably going to do like, probably going to do like the Knuckler's Quarry or the Forest of Phasing, all in one, on one episode, and then do whatever this is in the next episode. Yeah, not in the next episode, but in the next bonus episode. But yeah, but since it's on the left, I'm going to be taking on the exploratory uh, exploratorium next. And, you, as always, you get to decide the gender of our, of our prey, Plague Knight. So, 
I'm going to put the poll right up there. Click on that eye that just notified you to, hey, click me. And I think that's about it. So next time on Let's Play Shovel Knight, we are going to be busting in and exploding the explorat Exploratorium. See you guys then. So, a f somewhat funny story, I had actually, for my last couple of videos, I had been using exclusively <laughs> my internal microphone, because I didn't change the settings in Audacity. Basically, I d never changed it to actually select my actual microphone, which is what you're hearing now. So that's why my sound car quality well, was garbage, I thought I just got a bad mic, but no, this is actually pretty good, so... Yeah, I'm sounding like this from now on. So I'm gonna check the sound levels, and then I can I can always do it in um, sound editing. But oh, that's why I had so much trouble with like the internal workings, and that's why it sounds so cloudy because I was using an internal microphone. My goodness, I am such a scrub. Okay, cut, cut. Um, I'm gonna see how this sounds.